Welcome to the third part of the QF Test video tutorial about testing web UIs with QF Test. As already mentioned in the first part of this video tutorial, I would like to point out that this video tutorial use testing web UIs in place of all supported UI technologies like Java and Windows because the concepts and usage of QF tests are more or less the same. You can find explicit hints about the marginal differences in the written form of the tutorial. Today we will talk about creating procedures in order to reuse recorded sequences. Procedures allow us to record a sequence only once and reuse it in many test cases. This approach reduces the maintenance efforts of our test project. This video describes chapter 12, writing a procedure of the written form of the tutorial. As first step, we will learn how to identify parts which can be reused between several test cases. Then we will create a procedure manually. And last but not least, I will show you a best practice method which transforms sequences into procedures. For the demonstration, we will use the demo test suite first web test QFT from the QF test tutorial folder, which we already met in the first part of this video series. Therefore, I click on open test suite in the QF test toolbar and I change to the QF test installation folder. And there I change to the doc folder, to the tutorial folder. And then I open first web tests QFT. As we will change that test suite during today's session, I will save the test suite to a location which is writable for me. So I select File Save As in the QF test menu and I will save the test suite to my desktop. And now let's try to identify the first sequence which could be shared between test cases. So let's open the test set and let's open both test cases. After a closer inspection, I see that both test cases start with the test step reset and then the second test step, select model i5, is also the same. So it seems that we found two possible candidates which could act as a procedure. So if test steps or sequences had the same name in different test cases, the sequence or the test step could be a possible candidate for reusability. So if test steps or sequences had the same name in different test cases, those nodes could be possible candidates for reusability. As next step, let's check the content of the test step. So I open the first reset and the second reset test step. And we see both test steps have actually the same actions. So the test step can be shared and we can make a procedure to reset the application. And now I'm going to create a procedure manually using menu actions of QF test. Therefore, I select the procedures node, which is the common location for all procedures of a test suite. Then I open the procedures node and I open the context menu, select insert node, procedures node, procedure. In the appearing procedure details dialog, I can specify the name of the procedure now, which I call reset. Once I confirm the dialog via OK, a procedure node has been inserted to the procedures. And as next step, I should bring content into that empty procedure node. How to do that? So I open the procedure reset first, and then I select the mouse click of the first test step reset. So I select the first mouse click there, then I hold the shift key on the keyboard and I'm selecting the other two mouse clicks as well. So I can select multiple nodes in QF test, as you know, from other standard tools. Once the nodes are selected, I can move them into the procedure now. The simplest way to do so is just moving them via mouse using the drag and drop capability. Instead of moving it via the mouse, I could have used the context menu action cut and paste or using the keyboard shortcut Ctrl X or Ctrl V. Instead of moving the steps by mouse, I could have used the context menu cut and paste or the keyboard shortcuts Ctrl X and Ctrl V. And now the mouse clicks left the first test step. So the first test step is empty and the mouse clicks won't be executed anymore. As next step, we need to point to that procedure reset from that test step somehow. In order to do so, we need to insert another node to the test step reset. 
So I select the test step, then I open the context menu and select insert node, procedure nodes, procedure call. And then in the procedure called details, I am free to enter the name of the procedure once I could recall the name. Or I click on button in the left upper corner on this red blue button here. And once I click it, I get a select procedure dialog, which allows me to simply select a procedure which I would like to call. In my case, it's the reset procedure, so I select it and I press OK. The name of the procedure has been automatically filled to the procedure name, which I can also confirm via pressing OK now. And the call procedure node with the name reset has been inserted. And this node points to the procedure which we have recently created. To take the full advantages of procedures, I will change the second test step now to call that reset procedure as well. So I select the test step reset in the second test case and I open the context menu again. I press the blue red button again. I select the reset procedure, press OK and press OK. The remaining steps, so those three mouse clicks in my case, can be selected again via pressing the shift key on the keyboard and selecting the first and the last mouse click. And then I can delete them or remove them via the context menu action delete or via the delete key on the keyboard. And as a result of all of those actions, we got two test cases now pointing to a common procedure called reset. And if something changed in the reset process of that application, I had been able to change that procedure at only one location. And so I, I can update all test cases with one action. Another advantage of procedures is that I can simply call them for any new test cases without re-recording the entire sequence again. Just a short hint about inserting a call procedure node. I have inserted the procedure calls via the context menu every time. Insert node, procedure nodes, procedure call. Instead of doing that, you can also use the keyboard shortcut Control A or you simply use drag and drop again so you can select the procedure and drop it to the corresponding test step. And now I'm curious how the run logs of QF test look like once we call test cases calling procedures. So let me select the test set and start the test run. After the execution, we get the notification that an error occurs, which is okay because it's of the second test case, which is failing. So let's open the one lock now via pressing show one lock and let's check out the test steps. So if we open both test steps, we just see a call procedure, then we see the procedure and inside the procedure, we see the mouse clicks. So a call procedure as well as the procedure will be inserted as just one more level to that tree of the cure test run lock. Here I would just to give you a quick hint about the run lock creation of QF test. So in my case, at the top node, you see a one lock detailed run lock, which means that the setting of my QF test shows any executed node. So that's why I'm able to open both procedures here. Depending on the settings of QF test, you could end up in a text like run lock compact or run lock compacted here at the topmost node. And in this case, QF test will filter and optimize the shown nodes in the run lock. So it could happen that the executed steps are not in the in the run lock again. And if you would like to avoid this, you need to change the QF test settings via edit options. And there you will find run locks content. And there is a checkbox called create compact run lock. Please uncheck that box in order to see a full one lock every time. After creating a procedure manually, let me show you a best practice technique in order to be much faster in creating procedures and calling them. So before we do that, let's identify another test step for a procedure again. So in our case, we can take a look at the test step select model i5, which contains the same mouse clicks in both test cases again. So we have a new candidate. And a fast way to make a procedure out of that test step is now to select the first test step, open the context menu, and then we transform the test step 
into a procedure immediately. So instead of a test step, we see the call procedure node now. And the procedure node with its content has been created inside the procedures automatically. So this was much faster than the manual way. And of course, I can call the procedure now in the second test case via moving it into the test step or at the test case level and deleting the remaining mouse click. By the way, this context menu transform node into a procedure works also for sequences. As some kind of recommendation, you can take the hint that it's a good way to introduce procedures quite early to your test project. So if you recorded a sequence, you could directly transform it into a procedure if you had expected the sequence to be a possible procedure later. Consequently, new test cases would be able to access that procedure immediately then, without the need of re-recording the steps. In another video of this tutorial, we will talk about variables, which is quite an important concept and extension for procedures if the procedures contain the same workflow but different test data. So we reach the end of chapter 12, writing a procedure. We identify test steps which could be shared in between test cases. Then we created a procedure manually, moved the test steps from the corresponding test step into the new procedure and called the procedure in the test steps or test cases which required them. The context menu action transform node into is a shortcut to turn existing sequences or test steps into procedures immediately. Please keep in mind to introduce procedures as early as possible into your test project to keep the maintenance efforts as slow as possible. This short chapter contains some very, very useful hints about creating a successful test project. Another very important key factor to the success of your test project is the proper recognition of graphical objects, which we will talk about in the next video. Till then, try to identify some reusable sequences and try to create a couple of procedures in your test suite.